back in 2019, Games Workshop released some new Obliterator models. While I feel like these new Obliterators fit into the modern Chaos Marine model lines, I'm personally not a fan of the default model, for a few reasons in particular, but in general, I wanted some unique Obliterator models, as I really like the lore and the concept of them. Plus, let's be honest, I just like having unique models, so let's get on it. For the base of these boys, we're going to go to my start collecting box of Chaos Marines. But we're not actually using the main Obliterator bodies. Instead, we'll be using these Skaven Storm Fiends as the base, since they're only slightly bigger than the new Obliterators. Actually, there's nothing in this box. I've tricked you. I've got the sprues right here. Now we can start building the first model. You fool. I've tricked you once again. I've already started cutting out the pieces, you buffoon. Once again, you've fallen victim to my ruses. The first model we've started assembling, I haven't glued yet, as I wanted my obliterator's spines exposed. And for that, we need to cut a hole in their back. We glue a piece of styrene in there to give us something to build off of, anchor it in with some gel superglue and some accelerant. With the inner cavity created, we use plastic glue to weld the pieces together. Here I utilize a hand clamp leaving me to sample this stuffed crust pizza. Hmm, not bad for five bucks. I don't actually have an idea of going into this project, but then again, when do I ever? For now, I resolve to simply cut out and assemble the other two Stormfiend bodies. During assembly, I also use my X-Acto knife and various files and sanding sticks to remove the fur off of as many body parts as I can. If I had things mapped out, I could afford to leave some of these fur bits on and just cover it up later, but seeing as my efforts are aimless at this stage, I opt to remove as much fur as possible all over the model, re-sculpting in muscle definition if needed. With three bodies made, I label the underside of the model with a letter to better keep track of things. The first one is L for Leader, the original plan before he was demoted down the line. A for armor, because he has a lot of armor, and Y for yes, because he was just kind of there. I get to filling bigger gaps with green stuff. A mixture of more yellow than blue keeps it soft and easily crammed into small gaps. After that, I get to butchering these obliterator parts. The plan is to graft them onto the Stormfiend bodies to make them look more chaos-y. My main goal was to make them look like mutated marines, and while I had plenty of ideas I wanted to do, they made the models look a little less Chaos marine -y in origin. So, some ideas like different head shapes and limbs were issued to make Chaos Marine units look more appropriate for a Chaos Marine army. They are marines first, then demons, if that makes sense. With that precedent set, I graft the Obliterator arms onto the Stormfiend L's arm, using a scrap chunk of styrene as a plug that connects both pieces and smoothing the join with green stuff. From there, I start sculpting the spine in the recess we made earlier. Sculpting a spine is pretty easy, actually. You make a tube, cut in the vertebrae, Smooth a long divot into the middle of each of those vertebrae. Poke a hole on each dividing line to separate them out. Then smooth out the divots to accentuate some of the ridges. Honestly, a pretty simple method to make a spine a predator would love to rip out of someone. We skip over to A, where we start work on the body armor by cutting off the distinct raised flange shoulder bits of the Stormfiend breastplate. I start by putting some pieces up to his body and seeing what I like. I really like this obliterator arm with the multi-melt This obliterator arm with a multi-melt on it with this kind of aggressive pose to it. I wanted some kind of big piece on his back as well and opted for half of a whirlwind tank's missile weapon which I got from a friend's bitbox a million years ago. I debated on adding a spotlight as well, but opted not to, just to leave a little room for a patch of flesh metal down the line. I jump back to Stormfiend Y and L to fill in gaps of the leather straps normally covered by their regular accessories. 
Afterwards, I jumped back to A. While I had planned to just put the other obliterator arm on him, it went flying through the air when I clipped it, and I just could not find it. I swear to God, I looked all over the place. With my plan foiled by yours truly, and thinking on my feet, I found an old heavy bolter and slapped on two halves of a storm bolter on each side, making some kind of triple bolter to be mounted as a left hand. Gotta drill those barrels for assembly. We don't settle for black dots on the end of guns on this channel. Unless the gun's, you know, like really small, but, you know. Smash cut back to Y as I searched my old recast Mollerfiend bag for something to stick on his back. Everything I found looked just a bit too big though, so I opted not to use any pieces here. From there I go on a bits hunt, looking through every star collecting box and bit box I've got laying around for just something that I could use here. A Reaper auto cannon, a flamer, and some Necron bits were considered, but turned down. I decided to check my friend's old Battle for McCrag starter set he gave me second hand a long time ago, and I found a Dreadnought multi melter I decided to chop up. While I felt kind of bad for cutting up old, out of print models, let's just say this box was a uh, creatively assembled beforehand. So the original integrity of the model is, uh, subjective. With the multi melter going on Y's right arm, I decided to just use the original Skaven Gatling gun that goes on his left arm. I wanted a weapon variety on each model, so each one looks like it has like a rapid fire weapon, some kind of heavy weapon or explosive weapon. So a Gatling gun arm combined with a multi melter kind of made sense to me. I originally considered cutting out Y's chest, but I changed my mind, so I had to go back in and fill the hole. For this, I glued a spare sprue all the way down into the back of the model, and after some extra glue and some accelerant, I was able to cut this new chest post back down flush to the model, making it almost like new again once I applied the start of a little eyeball over it. Afterwards, Y gets his multi melted grafted on. Looking solid, actually. I'm liking it so far. We're back at A, where I decide to replace his removed breastplate shoulder pads with these two big ass vehicle plates I found in a bits box. Fairly sure they're orcish in nature, but given how much I poked my hand flesh while handling them, I kind of think they're honorary Chaos Marine bits at this point. Or at least corn bits. Plus, the plates give them a really imposing silhouette that really helped A take L's spot for squad lead and favorite model of the bunch. I opted to use an old Lord of Contagion head I got in my secret Santa box as his head, filling the hole in his neck with the same post method I used on Y's chest. Speaking of, Y gets his own head attached, a head from a Hellbrew, I, th I think, don't, don't quote me. I opt to mount it high to accentuate the distended neck and blend it in with some green stuff. For Y's shoulder, I decided to just stuff some shit up there, since honestly I was having trouble deciding on something. In the end I went for a Thousand Suns Bolter, uh, one of their pistols, and some random Death Guard heavy weapon that looked like it shot a bunch of bullets. Also during the process of connecting those, I spontaneously decided to convert Y's frontal neck area into a gaping maw. Not really sure where the idea came from, but after it was done, I was a really big fan. After making Y's maw, I decided to start layering wire and cables over his back. I also fill in his mouth with uh, little toothpick teeth. After that, I also go and lay some more wires on L while also adding these random Death Guard armor bits onto him to kind of bulk him out and give him some more flesh metal components. With all the wires and other random shit piled on, I begin to add some warped flesh onto their bodies. This was done with some Mod Podge applied on, then putting super glue on top of it, manipulating it into interesting shapes while it dries with a toothpick. I considered doing it the way I did in an old guide I made after returning to the channel a long time ago, but I remember being really tired after work, 
and just really did not feel like prying myself out of my chair to go microwave a bunch of glue. So here we are. So applying this flesh was going smoothly until I realized that Stormfiend L didn't have a shoulder mounted weapon. Looting the bits boxes, I settled on a Thousand Suns heavy weapon with a sort of underslung Grey Knight silencer I had left over from an old Kill Team project. There, problem solved. While everything dries, I decided to go ahead and knock out the marble base using a 50mm base. I had a kind of obvious epiphany while assembling them though. I usually cut out four square pieces of styrene and then lay them down as tiles. Uh, normally, it wastes a lot of materials and I can never really get them to line up all nice and neat where they all join. But this time I just decided to put one big ass square onto the base and then just carve the lines into it. Not only was this a lot faster, a lot easier, and gave better results than the four tile method, but it wasted a lot less styrene. Honestly, I'm not sure why I only thought about this just now. In retrospect, it was painfully fucking obvious. But hey, you know, we're 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 making it work. While Y had a solid stance going on, both L and A both have their foot up on objects. The storm fiends come with stones to put their feet up on, which makes no sense given the basing scheme of the Alabaster Palace. Going once again back to the bit boxes, I found the spare torso from the aggressor's kit along with a front leg panel. I think it was like if you were not gonna make a sergeant, just like a regular aggressor, it was a different torso option. I, I think. I don't know. Regardless, it ended up being the perfect height for A's foot, so I sliced it up and repositioned it more flatly onto the base, if that makes sense. I used green stuff to fill in the gaps and make the base more stable, and loot yet another different bit box for a spare recast arm and bolter I can use. Please do not ask me to count how many different bit boxes I have, I don't want that number in my head. Finally, I create the missing leg, the armor panel rests on top of, and the foot that goes with it. Then after that, I made a bunch of green stuff gore. Actually, after shooting this shot, I decided to go back and add some more intestines and a liver hanging out. After all, more gore is good. While I lay some paint onto this base, I'll address the painting portion of this video. A while back, I asked in a community post if I should cover painting again, if the painting scheme I'm doing is exactly the same as another video I've previously done, in this case the Hellbrute. A few people chimed in to say that we really didn't need to tread this ground again, and honestly outside of some skin wet blends, it was 100% the same method I used in that previous build. So with their guidance, I opted not to cover painting in this video. But if there is a majority that would prefer me to cover painting, even if it is kind of redundant, let me know and I'll put it back in. Honestly, I'm, you know, I think I'm fairly compromising, you know? For now though, we'll skip straight to the final spin shots. So there we go, three obliterators. Now, obliterators don't normally come in squads of three, but I had three storm fiends, I like the lore, I like the unit, and mechanically it works well with my army, so hell, why not three, you know? Sorry it's been a little while since I've gotten to upload something. I got a bunch of life stuff and a side project getting in the way, especially life. Work has been like really crazy lately. A lot of schedule swapping and unorthodox tasks you don't normally do and a bunch of that. But hopefully you'll at least be able to see that side project I've got going on soon. Or, you know, whatever my next main project is. Fair warning though, things will probably slow down when Sunbreak comes out, the Monster Hunter Rise expansion, which is uh, the 30th, I believe probably won't be a dead standstill as I'll try to allocate time to the next video 
and hopefully it won't be another month long gap but I'm gonna be honest if Sunbreak ends up hype as shit I can't make promises like this is a Monster Hunter game it's this is <laughs> I, I'm sorry but this is just a part of who I am you know when Monster Hunter games come out my entire schedule revolves around accommodating it subconsciously this has been going on for over 10 years and there's without a doubt no signs of this time being any different but yeah like I said I've got a side project I've got and I want to uh, want to show you guys some time and uh, I've had a couple of different unorthodox uh, ideas I think I want to experiment with one of them coming up is that normally something I do but it's something I want to at least try once and I think it'd be kind of fun uh, just thinking about the idea and um, I don't think it would be too work intensive so I think it'd be a nice little I, I don't I don't want to say side series because uh, God knows record shows that I am not good at committing to a video series sorry Demon Souls but I, I will come back to it one day just not right now you know but yeah I'm just rambling now um, so I'll get out of your hair if you're not keeping up with my community posts I've been actually kind of proactive there I, I'll, I post semi often so if you're not um, you know not the kind to really check those out I would ask that you do because I ask some pretty important questions and every once in a while I'll just kind of talk about random stuff but uh, yeah I, I like I like interacting with you guys Thank you for watching the video, guys. Really, it means a lot, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much.